Now I know we have had a lot going on with the NBA playoffs, but there's one team everyone has seemingly forgotten about. John Morant, Desmond Bain, and Jaron Jackson Jr. are poised for a huge bounce back season and no one is talking about it. On top of having a legit big three, this past Memphis season also revealed some more young talent on top of having the ninth pick in the upcoming draft. The Grizzlies haven't been paid much attention this season for obvious reasons, but the 2024-25 season will be huge for Memphis. Today I'm going to be going over this current Grizzlies roster, what they might do this offseason, and why this Grizzlies team is poised for a massive bounce back. Let's start with the center of this entire Grizzlies team, Ja Morant. Ja has obviously been dealing with a number of things over the past two years or so, but I believe next season will be a huge one for him. He is still only 24 years old and has had a ton of time to add to his game. Over the past three seasons, Ja has averaged 27, 6, and 8 on about league average efficiency, and I am fully expecting to see the best version of Ja yet in 2024-25. He definitely has aspects of his game he can still improve on, notably his three-point shooting. He did experience a dip from 34.4% to 30.7% in his past two seasons in which he really played, but I'm hoping Ja has made this a point of emphasis during his time off, because if he can become a better shooter, he will be almost unstoppable. It is worth noting that Ja did shoot nearly 42% from deep in the 2023 playoffs, so it's definitely in there somewhere. Yes, this is a small sample size, but this sample being during the highest intensity basketball is at least encouraging. Since we're doing small sample sizes, I feel obligated to mention that Ja shot a measly 27.5% from deep in his 9 games he played this season. If Ja can find the sweet spot at around 35-37% to on 4-5 to five attempts a night, I think this could be huge for him, especially when the court strengths come playoff time. Even if Ja doesn't have the 3-point improvement I am hoping for, he will still be the dynamic player we know and love. Ja is one of my favorite players to watch and I truly can't wait to see him out there again. Next up, we have the former Defensive Player of the Year, Jaron Jackson Jr. I love what Jaron brings to the table on both ends and his numbers this past season are misleading to say the least. Jaron was thrust into a main offensive role and while his points per game went up, his efficiency dipped drastically. But as I said, these numbers are misleading and I am not all that concerned. JJJ became accustomed to playing alongside an elite playmaker in Ja and with his return, I feel confident that Jaron's efficiency will return to 2023 levels. This time as a number one option will also help Jaron in that he has now experienced being the focus of the defense. He will inevitably be able to attack coverages better and be more effective as a tertiary scorer. The knock on Jaron is his rebounding, and I think we all know the solution is him being a power forward. He and Steven Adams had a great thing going, and I believe the Grizzlies will target an interior big to fill the void left by Adams. I'm going to discuss who exactly these people could be later, but the dream has to be Jared Allen. Another route could be to get an excellent rebounding four as well. Rounding out the Grizzlies' big three, we have Desmond Bain. Bain is a dynamic shooter, and he too experienced a scoring increase and efficiency dip due to being thrust into a main role. For reasons I just explained with Jaron, I expect his efficiency to return and for him to be made a better player due to his time as a main focus of game plans. He missed about half of the season as well, but in his time, he showed ability as more of a volume scorer, averaging nearly 24 on decent efficiency. The Grizzlies have a legit big three who are all 25 and younger and fit together well. This is a dream position to be in, and it only gets better. While they will have to move off the likes of Marcus Smart and Brandon Clark to make any major move, there is still great flexibility present with the current cap situation in Memphis. The Grizzlies also own many picks, including the ninth pick in this year's draft, and it has been rumored that they will use that pick to trade for an established vet. Before we talk about some potential moves, let's talk about the key to what makes a big move possible for Memphis to me. This would be the contracts of Vince Williams, Gigi Jackson, and Santi Aldama. While Aldama will be in the last year of his rookie deal this season, I'm more talking about Vince and Gigi. They are both under contract for the next three years at no more than two and a half million, and this will be massive in team building for these next few years. While the relatively low salaries of your big three at the moment will help you now, you're gonna have to pay them again, and soon enough, Jaron Jackson's 23 to 25 million will be turning into at least 40 to 45 million, if not 50 plus. Having contracts like Vince and GG's are crucial to building a true contender in the Supermax era. Vince, GG, and Santi aren't the only small contracts though, as all of John Conchar, Zaire Williams, and Jake LaRavia are slated to make 6 million or less next season. 
With Luke Kennard's near $15 million team option being a sure thing to be declined, this leaves, as I said, Marcus Smart and Brandon Clark's about $33 million for a possible trade or sign and trade package. The Grizzlies are almost surely going to target a center, and there are many names that could be available to fill this need, both in free agency, via trade, and in the draft. I've decided to zero in on four guys. Jared Allen, Nick Claxton, Isaiah Hartenstein, and Donovan Klingon. All of these guys are great bigs who would fill the need in Memphis and create a dominant front court with Jared. The first name here is probably the most out there, and that's Jared Allen. While with Evan Mobley's likely max extension pending, it has been assumed that Allen will be on his way out, this may not be the case. Despite this, I think for the right package, he could definitely be on the move, and I think Memphis has that potential right package. JA is an absolutely elite center and at least a top 30 to 40 guy in the association, and would fix all the needs of this Memphis team. He is an elite defender and rebounder and even has some good passing in there as well. This would be a home run pickup and would make Memphis instantly a top contender in the West if they weren't already. If you would like to keep Marcus Smart, you could package other guys such as Conchar and Zaire and offer more picks, but I think Cleveland would want Marcus Smart to pair in the backcourt with Mitchell, assuming they move off Garland as well. Next up, we have the free agents, Claxton and Hartenstein. And both of these scenarios would have to involve sign and trades. Claxton will probably get 20 to 25 a year, while iHeart will probably get in and around 20. While Clax isn't as good as Allen, he is still quality and it would likely take a sign and trade centered around Brandon Clark, others, and picks, as well as a financial commitment in the ballpark of four years and 100 million. There have been rumors about the Nets wanting to do whatever it takes to keep Clax, so they could overpay and this option could be gone. Next up, we have Isaiah Hartenstein, and I think this is my ideal target in basketball fit, contract costs, as well as what it would take to get him. The Knicks big man showed out this year in place of Mitchell Robinson, and I think he would be an amazing fit in Memphis. Not only can he play typical role man and rim protector, but he also has elite connective passing and touch around the basket, and has even showed the ability to step out and hit a jumper at times. There have been rumors about Hartenstein getting $100 million in free agency, and this isn't impossible. However, I think his market will look more like more lucrative short-term offers and less annually lucrative long-term offers. I think he'll get offered in and around $50 million on a two-year or one-plus-one deal, and around $80 to $90 million on a four-year deal. If the Grizz could get Hartenstein for in and around $20 million a year, I think this would be a win. Now for what may be shaping up should he fall to three, a trade up for UConn big man Donovan Klingon. This option is great because it would allow Memphis to have both their big man of the future and a four-year rookie deal that would be about half the dollar cost of the other options. Klingon is obviously not as good as the other guys yet, but this would allow for the continued building of a young core along with cap flexibility, especially when you have to do things like pay Jaron again as I've mentioned. While Klingon is the trade up option, there are also other centers that Memphis is rumored to be interested in in this year's draft, with likely scenarios being either them being selected 9th overall or Memphis trading down a couple spots. These two are Kella Ware and Zach Eady. There has been rumblings of Klingon potentially going number one to Atlanta, so expect these two to be in play. No matter what direction the Grizzlies go in this offseason, they should be a top contender in the West for years to come. They might not even go after a big name center and rather a rebounding forward to play alongside Jaron at the five. But again, no matter what they do, expect this Grizzlies team, should they be healthy, to be right back among the top tier of the stacked Western Conference next season. That's going to wrap this one up. If y'all enjoyed, please like the video, sub to the channel, and hit that noti bell. It would help me out a ton. And comment down below what you think Memphis should do. You know, I mean, if you're a Memphis fan, would you like a center or would you like a rebounding four? You know, again, rebounding four, you know, you could get that five out spacing. But, you know, I, I you know, I, I'm assuming that they're going to go after a big man, given what they have with Steven Adams. But, yeah, that's going to wrap this one up. Once again, if y'all enjoyed it, please like it up, sub to the channel. And I'm out. Peace.